Hey guys, welcome back to Lawrence McKenna channel. And yes, change is afoot. Ruben Amarim is apparently due to be Liverpool manager from the end of this season. It feels weird talking about it now. Season isn't over, there's still games to go, but all these rumours don't stop swirling around. And I think it's Sky Germany that's currently breaking the news that Ruben Amarim is to be Liverpool's next manager. And of course, there are people already saying, oh, well, why would you go for this guy over this guy? Why would you go for him over Nagelsmann? It's because Xabi Alonso rejected Liverpool. I don't think we really know many of the narratives right now. I think a lot of people have their hunches. There are ideas that people have about who would make a good Liverpool manager, who's there to follow on from Klopp in such a way. But what Liverpool really needed to do was dive down deep into the analytics, try and keep the success going, or at least the relative success going, and try to have a relatively seamless change in terms of output, but not in terms of identity at the club. With Michael Edwards coming in, with him being such a stat guy, with him being someone who was so intent on going down the route of we're going to build this Liverpool team in a very specific way, convincing Jurgen Klopp back in the day to sign Salah, to sign certain profiles of player, certain characters of player, and then Klopp obviously has coached a lot of those guys up. Of course, he's been a huge part of that success. But you've got to identify that high ceiling for any of these guys, and that comes from Michael Edwards and the research and the, you know, the, the big footprint that Liverpool had in terms of tracking people, in terms of going out there and finding out who was the right character for Liverpool, in terms of coaching, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of everything, Michael Edwards is a big part of that. Now, of course, it will also mean that there is big change at Liverpool. An entire working staff is leaving with Jurgen Klopp and Amarim will want to bring a lot of people in. It could be expensive for Liverpool in the end. Amarim himself, of course, just a couple of days saying, well, it may not be that I'm staying at Sporting if I get the right offer, or words to that effect, right? That's huge. I think all of this shows that Liverpool is still competing at the very top level and still competing at the very top level for one specific reason. They get a lot of business done. They get it done very quietly. You've not heard very much about Amarim, you know, publicly at least. There have been lots of speculation around him. There's been lots of speculation around Nagelsmann, the same as Xabi Alonso. And the reason I'm so confident about the decision, the reason that I would say... Not that I, I think it's nailed on success, but the reason I feel confident about the decision is because of people like Michael Edwards at Liverpool, because I see them looking at the stats and making informed, not just hunch-like decisions on people who genuinely are, they've got a very high, should we say, ceiling to what is potentially there. You remember what they did with Sally, you remember what they did with other players. That's not just down to Klopp, and there's a huge part of that that goes down to Klopp. There is a huge part of this which goes down to researching and knowing what football is going to be effective, knowing what kind of man is going to gel with this team, knowing the kind of character that you can get in at this club that's not going to be the same at Klopp. Amarim is clearly a charismatic guy. Amarim is clearly someone who can bond and can uh, galvanise a side of very rich footballers. Has he ever done it at the very, very top level? He's done it just below that. Sporting is clearly on the next level of clubs, maybe even the next level down if you're talking about the very top hierarchy, Champions League winners. Then you've got that kind of strata of people who are bourgeois money, not even bourgeois, like new money, bourgeois, new money, sporting. Maybe that's a little harsh on sporting, but you get what I'm saying here, right? <clears throat> He's done it at that level, and he's done it very consistently, and he's done it with a very consistent style of repeatable football, which is, again, clearly what Michael Edwards likes, seeing systems which work. Does that give me confidence? To an extent, yes. Does it mean that he comes in and is able to manage big names? We'll see about the big names. Does it mean that he's able to come in and take on a club the size of Liverpool? I think we're about to find out. It's very different to being Manchester United manager, very different to being, say, Chelsea manager. You have a set of fans that really want you to succeed. A fan base that is Liverpool fan base will be clearly bonded around any manager. It's very rare, apart from on Twitter, that you will see people particularly disagreeing on what is going on at Liverpool at any one time. There are people who disagree with the future of the club because some people want to play FIFA and some people want to live in reality. But broadly, you will see people agreeing that this is the route or if this is our guy, then we agree with this. Amarim, clearly that. Now, I don't think Liverpool are going to go much away from some of what people would say is the obvious managerial um, path. But I've got to admit, I did wonder if Michael Edwards was going to go a little rogue with this one. And Amarim, frankly, in this current manager's market, doesn't feel all that rogue. He actually feels quite obvious. But it is interesting to see that Liverpool have gone for an Amarim and not for a Southgate or a Potter or 
obviously they can't go for Alonso. Alonso would have been a great choice, but in the future at some point, hopefully that happens. Uh, could they have gone for Nagelsmann? I think Nagelsmann probably felt like too rogue of a shout. Probably also felt like, well, when are we going to get him? We need to be able to get into this almost instantly after the season ends, and we need someone who's going to hit the ground running at Liverpool. If you've got Nagelsmann playing at the Euros and all these kind of things, can you instantly go for that? Is there a seamless pickup? Maybe if you have got a director of football, maybe if you have got Michael Edwards, there would be. Some people are always going to have an alternate opinion. And I get it. Until we see the guy out in the training gear, you know, with the new players or with, the, with his new players or with Liverpool's new players, we're not going to be able to get a good read of him. But when I look at him strolling around the training ground, when I look at the way that he manages, when I look at the way that he dresses, when I look at the way that he holds himself, all of these things seem to indicate that he is a top manager for us. People are talking about, oh, well, it could be the David Moyes of this era. I think a lot of people are wishing it to be the David Moyes of this era. How much evidence, how much data there is to say that this is going to be that David Moyes type appointment for Liverpool? Very different. And first of all, let's just flag one thing. I think there is naturally going to be a drop away after Klopp. I think there is naturally going to be a period where whatever manager came in wasn't going to be able to keep a Klopp level, not of success, but just of tone. You were never going to get another Jurgen Klopp in the same way as you were never going to get another uh, Wenger, never going to get another Ferguson, never going to get another Pep. And all of these things add up over time. Liverpool need to stay at a certain level. They need to, to an extent, move away from what Klopp did. That's going to happen with Amarim, and I will do a full analysis of Amarim on this channel. That's going to happen with the personality. It's not going to be the same as Klopp. It's not going to be the same bond. It's not going to be the same, all of these things. We're going to have to learn to love this guy in a different way. It's the way that we learn to love Julier, Benitez, Brendan Rodgers. We knew how to love um, Kenny, but obviously we didn't know how to love Roy, and that was very obvious. Anyway, point being, right, there is a lot of change to come. But Amarim seems like one of the obvious candidates, and one of the obvious candidates for a reason. He's good. He is a great manager. He comes with clearly a set of players that he could bring along with him. Clearly, people who will want to sign for someone like Amarim or want to sign for someone like Liverpool. He also is clearly good at working with players who are not exactly always in the very top level, just below that, and getting results out of those people. Give them more resource, give them more time, give them more. Uh, players at his disposal who have already played at the very top level, what is it that he's going to be capable of doing? There is a lot there for us to unpack. Style-wise, I think some people call him slightly more defensive. I think that's probably fair. Klopp does play with a very loose club, should we say. He doesn't, doesn't mind if the ball sort of flies down the fairway at different angles, but also he trusts his players, and Amarim clearly does the same with a lot of what he does. There is a more, con what people would call a conservative back three, but actually it allows the rest of the team to be more attacking, pushes people down the field. What does it mean for someone like Trent? Probably means that Trent gets what he wants and gets pushed into midfield. What does it mean for someone like Soboslai? Probably gets to be a little bit more attacking, but also play that the role that he's already playing. Same for McAllister. What does it mean for someone like Endo? Well, it probably means that he gets pushed alongside someone else. So he's just going to do similar roles somewhere else. Liverpool haven't been a million miles away from this shape anyway in recent years. Robertson, Van Dijk, Canate, Robertson, Van Dijk, Kwanzaa, Joe Gomez. There's so many different people who play similar but adaptable roles, and there are so many people you can see fitting into this that you'd be interested to see what happens. What does it mean for someone like Salah, though? Salah, I mean, he has an immediate, an immediate space that he could fill, but does it mean that Liverpool might look to sell someone like that? Does it mean that Liverpool might look to move on from whatever output is these guys are doing and say to Amarim, can we get someone in at that position who will fulfil... You'll never replicate those numbers, but will we fulfil the overall numbers? Do Liverpool actually need to be changing the overall formation and not playing so much to Salah's strengths, playing more to the strengths of the entirety of the team? Possibly so. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that if Salah stayed, I'd be gutted. I think he's an amazing output player. What I'm saying is, if you're going to rejig things under a new manager, look to change something, look to bring in a big signing of a certain level and empower this new manager rather than just saying, hey, you know, we're just going to stick with more of the same. I think there will be changes. Naturally, there are always going to be changes. So let me know which changes you think are coming for you, which changes do you think are coming for Amarim, which changes do you think are coming for Liverpool, and which signings do you want to see initially for Amarim? I think I'd love to see a new centre-back come with him. Be interesting to see if we could put someone on that left-hand side for us. I think I'd love to see a new midfielder come in with him, possibly a defensive side. I think I'd love to see one new attacker. I think that probably looks in the Salah mould. I'd I think I know this is going to be a good signing for Darwin Nunez. You know, the country he came from, obviously not the same team, but uh, the country we signed him from. Liverpool have had a bit of a thing for Portuguese players and uh, sides in recent years. What can we do with that? I'll be interested to see what happens. 
Amarim. Oh, man. I'm not... The weird thing is, it kind of feels good, right? Like, it doesn't feel underwhelming. It feels good. Let me know what you guys think in the, uh, down there. Patreon, Discord, go hit them all. Support the channel, and we'll see you again real soon. Probably tomorrow. Much love. Bye. Oh, Eid Mubarak to everyone who's watching and celebrates. Appreciate you guys.